Hi, everyone. Welcome to this section. I'm going to just uh, spend a couple minutes introducing the subject, and then I hope that we can all participate in a group activity because it's much more fun that way. So I'm going to share my screen. So I think the uh, idea is to look through how AI can be used in teaching. Um, and I need you to all scan this QR code uh, that's going to be displayed on the screen later um, that will help you do the activity. So this is just the, the same short code, uh, bit.ly, uh, today's date, 23 uh, uh, December 15th, SOC teaching with AI all dashes. <clears throat> So the reason why I want to do this as an interactive activity is because it makes a lot of sense to discuss AI by using it. So I suggest that everyone in the room try to pick a um, large language model or an AI agent that you have access to. Uh, for example, Gemini, Bard, uh, GPT, etc. And then uh, try to debate and find your own answer to these questions. This is what I did for this uh, section. Uh, to create some of ideas. But first, I thought it would be good to frame what the problem is uh, from the point of view of what the NUS AI community of practice has uh, created. So as you probably know, there is an NUS level AI um, community of practice, and we have our own in SLC called Rosetta that's under NUS sale or, or related to it, I should say, uh, which Colin is leading. And the Teaching Academy has uh, pulled together a number of different uh, ways where we can use generative AIs as a way of framing different use cases. For example, as an idea generator, uh, as a model generator, generating actual um, models with use in the class. Personally, as a personal assistant, uh, where it can be used uh, to aid an instructor or a student directly. Um, as a 24-7 on-call teaching assistant that we could uh, ask uh, students to use directly. Um, as an analyst or enabler to take data um, or code that's written already and have the generative agent um, analyze or describe it, uh, possibly in an interactive way. And of course, defensively by creating assessments that we think uh, a generative AI agent won't be able to answer very straightforwardly so that the student has to engage more deeply. So I asked GPT, uh, what are some ways that uh, large language models or generative AI can be used for helping in the classroom? And I uh, came up with uh, quite a number of suggestions and I had it categorize them. So roughly, we can look at uh, uh, a theme of lecture preparation, a theme of interactive engagement, and a theme of adaptive support and learning. So I'd like you to think about which of these three interests you the most and pick one of these themes to investigate further uh, in small groups. Um, don't worry, we're going to come back to the slide in, uh, in a short while. And to access the activities, you'll need to scan the QR code, which I've uh, again repeated here. So this session is really short. We only have around um, 17 minutes. So I thought it would be useful to try to do this in a generative style. So uh, what we can do is first, uh, each person who's here in the audience, we can generate a couple key phrases or words going off of the, the phrases uh, that are already here. So you can think about your own classroom, for example, in lecture preparation, if I'm teaching a class on natural language processing and I wanted to do um, use it for virtual uh, lecture assistance, I might take one of the specific um, lectures that I'm going to give and think about how I would do that. <clears throat> and the idea is to generate a, a couple keywords or phrases uh, and we're going to do this uh, just for two minutes, okay? Um, and uh, on the screen, we're just going to show slide four that we showed earlier. Uh, and you can do this on your laptop or on a piece of paper or in your head. 
And afterwards, what I want to do is subdivide all of us into subgroups, subgroups of roughly about three people or so, uh, where each uh, third person, a uh, group of three will take one of these uh, decks over here. Uh, for example, if we're doing the first lecture preparation, um, then I would work with two other people to come up with um, a particular idea that we would uh, try to elaborate on. So the, how we would go about this is first to um, uh, present our own ideas with each other and then select one. So I, we don't have much time. We only have about five minutes for that. So we want to scribe this down into, uh, say, a slide like this, and then write this up uh, very shortly so it could be presented. Okay. Um, not all groups have to present. So the last part of this uh, activity is to uh, have our, our moderators who are present in the room pick one example from each of the free themes uh, just by volunteering um, to hear more about what that activity might look like um, and to uh, have enough time to go over it and, and perhaps even uh, have time for one or two questions. Okay. Once we're done with this activity or while you're doing it, you might find some resources that would be useful. You can just cut and paste them here in, in slide six. And with that, uh, I am uh, done with this uh, introduction. Uh, please go to uh, this slide and um, think about which theme you want to do and start by doing this. And then in a couple minutes time, we'll call time. And then we would like you to reorganize yourself in the room so that groups of three on the same theme can be sitting together, or roughly that number, okay? Thanks so much.